Know the top stories of the day. Understand the issues that matter. This is Manila Bulletin News on Web. Your quick rundown of top news in the country and around the world. Manila Bulletin, celebrating 120 years of timely stories and timeless truths. Be fully informed. Hi, I'm Barbie Atienza. This is MB Now, and here are your news on web. An infectious disease expert on Monday, May 31, dispelled fears over a newly detected coronavirus disease variant from Vietnam. According to multiple reports, the variant was said to be a hybrid of the highly transmissible variants first detected in India and the United Kingdom. Infectious diseases specialist Dr. Edsel Salvana said in an interview that the reports are very sketchy and that they haven't even seen the sequences yet. He added that the variant from Vietnam was not yet a variant of concern. Vietnam Health Minister Nguyen Tan Long flagged the new variant as very dangerous. He was also quoted saying that laboratory cultures of the new variant, which is said to be much more transmissible than the previously known types, revealed that the virus replicated itself very quickly. Independent research group Okta urged the government to ramp up its vaccination rollout to prevent a possible ripple effect of the coronavirus disease surge in Metro Manila to other regions. Okta research fellow Dr. Guido David said in an interview that there is a ripple effect to the provinces but eventually it may return to NCR, this is why the government must focus on vaccinations. He added that the cycle will be cut off if the number of vaccinations increased. Based on Okta's latest report, Metro Manila's reproduction number has likely increased from 0. 0.5 to 0 0.68 over the past week. According to President Rodrigo Duterte, the coronavirus pandemic has become a difficult and challenging time for everyone, but the nation's resilience and strong faith can help carry the country through this period. Duterte sought the country's healing from the pandemic in a pre-recorded message during the virtual interfaith prayer meeting last Sunday, May 30. The president encouraged Filipinos to continue to pray for the country's recovery, which has claimed many lives and affected the economies and livelihoods of many people. He also offered a prayer for the country's frontline workers including the health professionals providing care to people infected with the coronavirus disease. I join everyone as we gather for the whole nation, pray as one, heal as one interfaith event. The present COVID-19 pandemic has truly been a difficult and challenging time for all of us. In this time of trial, it is only right that we look to the Lord Almighty to guide us not only towards the path of righteousness but also to full recovery. I therefore commend everyone who has organized this event for inviting the Filipinos from different faiths to come together and pray for the healing and salvation of our people. As a, res as re as a resilient, strong and faithful nation, let us put our trust in the Lord Almighty and hope that through our fervent prayers, He will heal our land. Light to moderate with at times heavy rains are expected over several areas in Mindanao as Tropical Depression Dante intensified into a tropical storm on Monday, May 31. In its 11 a.m. Tropical Cyclone Bulletin, Pagasa said Dante has maximum sustained winds of 75 km per hour near the center and gustiness of up to 90 km per hour. Dante is moving northwestward at 20 km per hour. Light to moderate with the times heavy rains will be experienced over Caraga and Davao region, Soxargen, Bukidnon, and Misamis Oriental due to the outer rain bands of Dante. With the present track forecast of Tropical Storm Dante, it is less likely to make a landfall. Here is a roundup of news in and around Metro Manila. Let's watch these reports. The Marikina City Government has hired more doctors and nurses to increase its vaccination capability against the COVID-19. Mayor Marcelino Marci Chedora recently signed appointments of 12 doctors and 9 nurses who will be tasked to help in the vaccination efforts of Marikina. He also signed the promotion of 6 nurses who were under casual appointment. He thanked and commended the city's medical frontliners for their service and hard work for residents during the pandemic. The mayor said they are boosting the city's vaccination efforts to achieve herd immunity 
before the year ends. 20 residents in Mutindupa City who have been vaccinated against COVID-19 won 25 kilos of rice each in a raffle draw that aims to encourage more people to get the jab. Barangay Sukat headed by Chairman Rafi Sevilla launched the innovative Bigasa Bakuna raffle promo that will give half a sack of rice every week to 20 people who have been inoculated Sukat Covered Court, one of the major vaccination hubs in Mutindupa. The first raffle draw was held on May 30 for people who were vaccinated from May 24 to 29. Sevilla told Manila Bulletin that they launched the raffle promo for people to be informed and educated on the importance of vaccination. He said the Bigasa Bakuna raffle promo will be done until it's needed, which may last until next year. The female driver who was earlier apprehended for hitting a traffic enforcer in Manila has tested positive for illegal drug use. The Manila Police District Special Mayor's team disclosed on Sunday, May 30. MPD Smart Chief Police Lieutenant Colonel Rosalino June Ibai Jr. said Pauline Mayes Altamirano, 26 years old, and her three cohorts tested positive for shabu use. Altamirano, who was caught in camera hitting a traffic enforcer, was arrested in Malate, Manila on May 27. Investigators learned from the phone conversation of Altamirano that she was a drug courier. With this information, members of MPD Smart conducted an entrapment operation on May 28. All the suspects are currently under the custody of MPD. And now, let's take a look at the latest news in other parts of the country. Here are the details. Department of Tourism Secretary Bernard Romulo Puyat personally visited Baguio City on Sunday, May 30 to inspect some tourist spots in the summer capital of the country. The tourism chief is hoping that the COVID-19 cases in the country will continue to decline so that the IATF and the Department of Health will soon give their approval and go signal to allow tourists from the National Capital Region Plus to visit Baguio City early this month. Mayor Benjamin Magalong has no problem with the proposal of the DOT as long as the tourists will comply to the proper protocol. Meanwhile, the first ever floral sculpture competition named as Sasabong Timayo was held in Rose Garden in Burnham Park where the modern Dalaga Filipiniano inspired floral design won the event. The DOT together with the Department of Labor and Employment distributed 156.4 million pesos worth of cash assistance to more than 31,000 displaced tourism workers and other related sectors in the Cordillera Administrative Region. Operations of all beach and inland resorts in the island garden city of Samal are suspended as well as gatherings and parties in private resorts and establishments from June 1 to 14 due to the spike of COVID-19 cases. Mayor Al David Uy released Executive Order No. 291 on Sunday that aims to arrest the surge of COVID-19 cases in the city as well as in neighboring local government units. Exempted from the Executive Order are Department of Tourism star-rated resorts which may continue to operate as they have been certified to have passed the agency's staycation program. Uy said they are protecting the city from the National Capital Region and neighboring LGUs, specifically Davao City that have reported a surge of cases as well as the emergence of new COVID-19 variants. And now the updates from around the world. Here is the report. Canadian health authorities announced Saturday that they were pushing back the expiration date on nearly 50,000 doses of AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine by one month. Health Canada said in a statement its approval to extend the shelf life of two lots of vaccine from May 31 to July 1 was supported by scientific evidence. A spokesperson for Health Canada said that as of May 22, there were about 49,000 doses of AstraZeneca in the country with an expiration date of May 31. CBC reported that most were in Ontario province. Canadian health authorities had previously approved a six-month shelf life for AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine, but they said they received information from the company on May 27 that it would be safely and effectively used for an extra month. Vietnam has discovered a new COVID-19 variant which spreads quickly by air and is a combination of the Indian and British strains, state media reported Saturday. The country is struggling to deal with fresh outbreaks across more than half of its territory including industrial zones and big cities such as Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. More than 6,700 cases including 47 deaths have been reported in Vietnam. The lion's share has occurred since April. 
The new round of infections has made the public and government fearful and authorities quickly moved to place strictly limits on movements and business activity. Vietnam, a country of 97 million people, is now ramping up its job rollout and hopes to achieve herd immunity by end of the year, according to the Minister for Health. French artist has taken over the Trocadero Esplanade in Paris. The present alternative view of Eiffel Tower by using paper collages to create an optical illusion of the famous landmark. French artist JR has created an art installation beneath the 132-year-old structure that makes it look like a gaping hole has opened beneath it, which scenes of Paris streets is a distance below and ahead. The playable exhibit invites visitors to interact with, taking pictures of themselves appearing to fall into the canyon. The latest in showbiz. Let's watch this. The country's representative to the recently concluded Miss Universe beauty pageant has opened up on her alleged breakup with boyfriend Neil Salvation. In a recent interview with Boy Abunda, Rabia admitted that all is not well with her and Neil. The 24-year-old Ilonga beauty said that they need to talk about things but they need to have space at the moment. Rabia is hopeful that everything will be sorted out, noting that they have been in this kind of situation before and that she is not closing any doors. Rabia is currently on vacation in the United States where she is also hoping to be able to finally get in contact with her father. And now the latest from Manila Bulletin Sports section. Let's watch this. The ageless Nonito Donaire needed just four rounds to reintroduce himself as one of boxing's greatest when he knocked out previously unbeaten foe Nordin Ubali of France to win the WBC Bantamweight title on Sunday, May 30 Manila time in Carson, California. Donaire, who at age 38 is a four-division world champion, dropped the Frenchman twice in the third round before he unloaded the coup de grace at the 1 minute 52 seconds mark of the fourth round to the delight of a small crowd inside the Dignity Health Sports Park. The Filipino Flash became the oldest bantamweight champion, a record that was held by compatriot Jerry Peñalosa, who was 36 when he smashed Johnny Gonzalez in 2007. The 34-year-old Ubali, for his part, suffered the first loss of his boxing career since 2014. And those are the news on web today, May 31, 2021. For more news and details, get your copy of the Manila Bulletin newspaper tomorrow or you can log on to www.mb.com.ph. You may also subscribe to our newsletter through the link on this video's caption to have the day's latest news delivered to your inbox. I am Barbie Atienza for Manila Bulletin. Join us again tomorrow. This has been MB Now. Be fully informed.